Hi, it's Tim from Booth Events. In this video, we're going to walk through the entire event lifecycle. We're going to create an event, configure it, and then we're going to run it, and then we're going to see what it looks like in the gallery, and then we're going to, going to grab that guest data and save that on our computer. Okay, so first, what are we seeing here? On the left-hand side of the screen, you can see the website. So I'm signed in on booth.events as the same user as on the right hand of the screen where you can see the iPad app. So on the left, the website, on the right, the iPad app. Okay, great. So at the moment we have no upcoming events, but this coming Friday, we have my imaginary 50th birthday party. So let's go ahead and have that in there. Boom. Okay, let's set a date. It's important to note that this date doesn't really mean anything doesn't have any impact on when your event will expire, when your gallery will expire. If you want to read more about that, we have a help article about that. But basically this date is just to help you organize and to help you put things in order on the iPad app. Okay, so let's put that for this Friday. And let's hit create. We'll take a look at the right hand side of the screen there. You can see that already, you can see Tim's 50th is already in the list there. So all of our data in our system is synchronized automatically. You don't have to download anything or sync anything, it just works. So in this case, on the left-hand side on the web app where I just created that event, you can see it's already opened it. Makes sense, we just created it, now we want to change it. So the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, I don't like this default template that it's picked for me here, so I'm going to hit change. And here I can see a list of all of these templates. So what is a template? Well, a template is what controls whether how many photos the iPad app is going to take and how it lays them out. So for example, if you can see this one here, it's got three image areas. You can see one, two, three, and that tells you which photos are going to go where. So that first photo is going to go in the one, the second goes in the two, and the third goes in the three. All right, cool. So I'm going to click on that one. I like that one. Um, and you notice how now there's two check marks. Well, that's because you can assign multiple templates to the same event. And when you do this, this lets the guests choose which one they want. Okay, so I'm gonna unselect that one by clicking it and I'm gonna scroll down. And you can see now I'm getting into this area called public templates. And those are the ones that we've made that you can use. And you can also choose to, to duplicate and edit them if you wanna mess around with them and make your own versions of them too. So let's scroll down and we'll select a few of them. Let's do one of those and one of those. And, ooh, Intergalactic Unicorns is definitely my ultimate favorite, so let's have that. Okay, great. Let's hit Save Changes here. Okay, great, and I can see all of those in my list up here. That's great. All right, also you can see the other options I have. So by default, Stickers is turned on, and the Attract screen is the default Attract screen. And you can see I've got no photo for this event, so I'm just going to quickly add one. I'll hit the Edit button. And I'll go to the branding tab here and I'll click on the logo and I'm going to go to my downloads and I'm going to choose this amazing picture of a door and boom okay on the left hand side you can see it uploaded on the right hand side on the iPad you can see that's now been set as well okay great I also have the choice to change some colors here to set my links on the gallery pages so this is all about branding your event including the gallery and there's more specific options here for branding the iPad app so that's the guest experience in the iPad app we've got consent options there's another video on that if you'd like to see it and if we go back to the main details page most of these settings here are focused around configuring your gallery all right, for now, we're just going to save our changes. We're good with what we've got. And now we're back to the event page. Okay, great. So I'm all set. I've chosen my templates. If, if I had made or paid someone to make a template, I would have uploaded it using the template editor over here and then set it in here. We have another video for that too. So let's go ahead and start that event. So now we can pretend we've driven to the event venue and we've got our extension cords all hooked up. We've got our iPad booth, our shell all in place, and everything's all ready to go. So I'm gonna to touch that, that event here on the right, on the iPad, Tim's 50th. And you can see there are two options at the top, launch and preview. So preview is gonna allow you to take photos and mess around without any, uploading anything to the gallery. And that's great for testing things out. Um, let's first have a look at some of the settings here. So you can see 
on the on the iPad app on the right of your screen there we've got the uh, camera up here so if I touch that that's going to open the camera settings we're just going to leave everything at the default for now but that's a great way of, of changing your settings if you find that the defaults aren't working for you uh, and if I at the bottom here there are three pages of events so if I choose the middle one then you can see by default all of the capture types are turned on. So photos, slow-mos, boomerangs, GIFs, videos and sound. By default everything's turned on. And for this event, let's just say we want to make it really simple. We want to turn off everything except photos and videos and sound. Let's say for whatever reason that's what the, the guests, uh, the people who had hired us had asked for. Okay, great. So I'm going to go hit preview and we'll open that up and see what it is. So here, first thing we can see is it's telling me which event we're launching, which is great because that lets us know if I picked the wrong one by mistake. And it also gives me this visual preview of the events that I've, or the templates rather that I've chosen. Again, just helps me make sure, are those really the right templates? Did I pick the right ones? Now I can vis visually check that that's, that's correct. And it's telling me a few other useful pieces of information as well, like the internet access is online, so I know that this thing is properly connected. And it's also showing me there's no uploads pending, meaning if I had done an event before and some uploads were stuck in the app waiting to upload because you didn't have internet access, this is where I might find out about that. Okay, so I'm going to hit OK on this. And we're just going to take some a test photo of the beautiful ceiling here. So let's do this template here. Now, you can see once I've selected photo and I've selected the template, the next thing it's doing is it's, it's asking me to start. And it's... It's showing this, this kind of black box, this black outline around the box there. That's to help your guests know where to stand. So that depends on your template. It's showing, hey, that's where the photo is going to go and the template is going to look like that. So let's go ahead and make photos. So I've, I've hit the button to start. And you'll notice it's taking three photos. Well, why is it taking three? Well, you remember I picked a template that has three photos in it. That's why it's taking three. And each one of those, the, the black area is changing to show you where to stand, which makes hopefully that they're as similar as possible for your guests. Okay, and remember we left the default stickers collected, so I'm just going to chuck a sticker in there, move that around with my fingers. Looks good. I'll hit next. And then finally, since we're in preview mode, there's no emailing or texting, and we're not uploading it to the gallery because we're in preview mode, but we can test printing if we want to. Okay, so that was the preview. So now I've got a good feeling, yeah, that looks good, that's what I want, so I'm going to exit my event. How did I do that? So I hold down two fingers on the screen. When I hold two fingers on the screen for about a second, that's what pops that up and pops that, that menu to help me close it. So I'm going to click close event, and for this demo I've set just a password to make it super easy, but you can use Face ID or you can use your iPass passcode, um, that'll be the default. Um, when you go to close the events, whatever you use to unlock the iPad. Okay, great. So I'm all ready to go. I've tested it out. I've checked everything's working. If I had a printer, I would have tested that. If I had a connected USB camera, I would have made sure that was working. Let's go ahead and launch the event. So now I'm hitting that launch button at the top. And you can see there's a whole load of things that are showing me a, a set of, of, of information about what's going on. I've got one warning there that the orientation of the iPad's wrong. Well, I, you know how I quickly chose a bunch of different templates. Some of those have different rotations. So in other words, it's warning me that they're not all the same. That's fine. Okay. At the top here, I have the option to use only this iPad or I can use the share station feature. That's a subject for another video. We're just going to leave it as only this iPad. We're going to hit start event. Again, I get the confirmation of what's going on. No preview warning at the top now because we're actually launched. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and make another photo. I hit photo and again, I get to choose the template. It's worth showing that these are these template previews are live. So as the guest is interacting and scrolling up and down on this list to pick a template that they like, they're seeing um, their own face in that template so they can visualize what it looks like. Okay, let's pick the best template that exists, which is definitely the intergalactic unicorns. And we'll make some pictures of my ceiling, riveting pictures indeed. What you're seeing there is the countdown timer, three, two, one. And you can change that to any value you want. By default, that's going to be three seconds. All right, well, we'll let that last one finish and process there. Okay, and there you can see the photos are outlaid into the template. Now, if I want to, I can reshoot one of those photos. So if I hit the reshoot button at the top there, I can just choose one of those photos, let's say the top left one, 
and now let's put my hand in so we can see it changing. Now you can see, okay, I've reshot that photo. So that's really great if you've got, say, two photos that are awesome and one that someone's got their eyes closed. You can choose just to reshoot that one photo afterwards. Okay, so let's continue on. Now I have the options because we've launched the event. I have the options to scan a QR code or text or email. So I can go ahead and email that to myself or if I hit the QR code, I can hold my mobile phone camera at that as the guest and point it and get the link to the gallery, which is super useful. For this demo, let's go ahead and email this to ourselves. So I'm going to go ahead and email it to myself here. And I get to confirm that, yes, that's my email address. I didn't type it wrong. Off it goes. Great. It says the email will be sent. And I'm done there. And now the next guest can, can start going. So let's do one more again. Do a different template this time. And this time we'll use a different email address just so we can see two sets of, of guests using the app when we export the guest data. All right. Just a few more seconds here. Perfect. Okay, great. Happy birthday to me. And let's go ahead and put in a different email address here. Okay, great. Send it. Off goes another email. Great. And I'm done that one as well. So you can imagine that guests will keep using the, the app um, throughout the evening and the attract screen will come on. I think the default is about three minutes. That's that screensaver. Um, and you can change the timing for that any way you like. Um, but at the end of the night, when you're done, you can simply close the event. So hold two fingers on the screen, hit close. In this case, you can see no uploads pending. That's really important because that tells you, yes, everything's been uploaded already. If you don't have internet access, that's absolutely fine. Those uploads will sit there in the app until you do have internet access, in which case they'll automatically start uploading. So if you have uploads that are stuck waiting in the app, double check your internet connection. You can open Safari and try browsing to our website. If you see a login from your hotel Wi-Fi, venue Wi-Fi, something like that, that's not good. That's not gonna work well with the app. You should use your cell data instead. Okay, once internet access is there, all the uploads will pass. If I close that, I can have a look. There's all my uploads and they're all just happily uploaded. Okay, great. So on the left-hand side, if you'd been looking, you would actually have seen that upload number was increasing live as these uploads are processed because it's not just the app that's automatically synchronized, it's the website as well. So all of these have automatically synced and also these guests popped into this table automatically. I didn't have to reload this page either. Great, so now I can see some information about my guests. That's handy, especially if I want to go see them. So let's just go and have a look at that first set of photos. I'm clicking those dots there. And I'm going to click View Photos. And there we go. There up pops the, the uh, guest session that I've just clicked on. And I can directly open the photo that I want. I can directly download them, copy the link, whatever I want to do. Super easy. Okay, that's... You can imagine this list is really long. Let's say you had thousands of photos taken and you had 300 guests. So there would be a lot of rows here. Now, it's much easier to work with that data in a program that you're used to. So I'm going to export those guests as a CSV on the right-hand side here. And then once that's downloaded, I'm going to open it. And here you can see this is on a Mac, so this is numbers, but it's whatever CSV program you have on your computer, like Microsoft Excel, for example. And here you can see these are the two guests that we had. And we didn't have consent turned on, so no consent was given anywhere. And you can see which file names were, were taken. So if you've downloaded the zip file of all of the gallery, that would be useful to cross-reference which ones are which. Or you can see a link directly to the session. Okay, so let's take a, a closer look at the gallery here. So when I get an email, well, it has a link, which is going to link you to here. And once you've gotten here, you're going to open that link, get here, and then you can click any one of these photographs and open them. Or you can download a zip. So if you're on a desktop, that's what you'll see. If you're on a mobile phone, you won't see download a zip. You will see a, a way to save the photos manually on your phone. That's different. So by default, guests can go to the gallery. So there's a button at the top to the gallery. I'll click that. 
And now as a guest, I'd be seeing all of the photos. And all I have to do is scroll up and down and it's looking for new ones as they come in. Now, you might not want that. You might not want um, any guest to be able to see anyone's photos. Maybe you just want them to see all of their photos. So if, if that's the case for you, you can go back to the event and edit the event. You would need to do this before, but you can do it afterwards as well. But you would turn this switch off. So this is on edit event details. You turn off guests can view entire gallery there and turn that off and save the changes. And now if I go back to that link again, so let's say go back to the photos of this first guest got here. Now there's no way to get back to the gallery at the top. It's, it's not going to allow me to go there. And if I was clever enough to try the different links, it wouldn't work either. Okay, so you've learned in this video how to create an event, how to run it, what running it looks like on the iPad, how you see your templates and choose them, what the guest experience is like, how to send emails, and you've seen also what the on the back end you've seen here on the website how, where the guest data pops out and how you can export it as a CSV. Whew, that was a lot. If you have any questions or you like this video, please let us know in the comments. And if you have any requests for other videos, we're always interested to hear what you're after.